Oh my god. Welcome to the video. I wanted to briefly catch you up on what I've been up to in the trails so far. So the Golden Trail World Series is a series of six races in the preseason and one grand final. I've done two of those preseason races, which you run in order to score points, to improve your world ranking, and then at the end of the six preseason races, the top 30 athletes in the world go to the world finals where you compete in two races to see who will get the crown of world champion. Now in the first race, Pikes Peak, I got 20th and scored 103 points, but then I went to Mammoth Lakes a week later and competed in my second Golden Trail World race, and there I had a much better race and managed to finish 9th, which scored me 136 points and moved me <laughs> remarkably into the 28th ranked spot leading into the world finals. Now, I said remarkably because I was shocked that I got there because I just didn't think I would. But anyways, the finals were in Italy, and so after I got that ranking, I said, well, we better go to Italy. There's really no way around it. We're going there. So I headed to Italy, and the first race was going to be a prologue which was 8.7k with about 400 meters of elevation gain. And then the final race was a 27 kilometer long race with about 1400 meters of elevation gain. And it was in a new format called a flower course that the Golden Trail series was trying out where you do loops and return to the same spot between each loop. So it makes it more spectator friendly and easier for them to have aid stations. So this was an interesting thing to try and it involved a lot a lot of up and down but anyways before any of this can start I have to get to Italy so I started out on Tuesday night and flew to Frankfurt from Seattle I also just didn't calculate the time change well or my arrival because I ended up getting to Italy less than a day before my first race which wasn't ideal to France and I literally walked out of the airport without anyone even looking at my passport like i feel like i'm breaking a law right now but followed the exit signs why do i feel like someone's following me let's take a look no followers but i feel like i'm being followed uh, anyway i'm walking to the train station now Especially after having about 20 hours of travel, two flights, two train rides, it would have been good to have a day to reset, but we'll take what we can get. Just woke up, it is race day. <laughs> I actually slept pretty well. I slept like eight and a half hours, so ideal. Um, and yeah, I'm gonna go shake out. So the next morning I did a shakeout and got to see the area for the first time, which was really cool because when I had gotten in, it was dark, but the area was absolutely beautiful gonna do a quick bit of bath mat mobility now. I actually feel like surprisingly okay. I'm definitely a little bit tired, but like I shook out for 15 minutes and I feel pretty fine, which is great. After that, I just ate breakfast and then walked into the little town to grab a coffee. I just got this coffee for 150. Like, <sighs> this is the place for me. It's the place. Then I made my pre-race meal and checked out the weather, which was looking absolutely lovely. And after being in Italy for about 18 hours, it was time for the prologue. Now, this race was a wave start, so they started us one at a time, one minute after each other. And the race course was really crazy, did a 180 degree turn immediately. And then you went down two flights of stairs and then you went like 300 meters on this beach. And then after that, you went through an underground tunnel down more stairs, came up the other side and started the climb. Now the climb was about a mile and a half long with 400 meters of elevation gain, which is around 1400 feet. And it was so difficult. You can tell by how hard I'm breathing right now. I am literally on the brink of death. I didn't know, but there was a false summit, started down and then had to keep going and that was heartbreaking. Oh my God. 
one. Good job, good job. But once I got to the actual descent, it was really fun. It was pretty technical, but I honestly enjoyed it a lot. I was really trying to rip and run the fastest time I possibly could because I had no idea how I was doing because of the wave start. I just had no concept of how fast I was running, but when I finished, they told me that I had run the top time of the day, which was great, but also I was the first of the world elite to start because I was the lowest ranked person there. So I really didn't know what that meant, but I ended up getting seventh, which was way better than I expected to do because I was ranked 28th going in. And so it made me really happy and excited for the main race. Also, all of our transport was on this little train, which was so cute. All right, it's the next morning after the race and I just wanted to reflect a little bit. Towards the top, I was absolutely dying absolutely dying <laughs> and there was a cameraman following me for like half a mile and he just had to witness my death it was so tough and the downhill was a little bit technical for the top part i was super nervous for it but i actually enjoyed it i didn't know if i'd really be good at technical stuff i still don't know if i really am i ended up getting seventh which was really good that's the best i've ever placed in a world trail series race i'm happy with it but it's really just the start and the race that matters is saturday so i really want to be able to put in a solid performance for that one too Okay, I'm about to go do a shakeout run. I am not going to film because it is pouring rain outside. So I'm just gonna have to trust me that it happened. It was a pretty basic pre-race day. Just hung out, did this run, got some coffee. And then later that day, we went and watched the men's prologue and then just prepared everything for the big race the next day. I woke up four hours before the race and then just went right downstairs and got going on making a coffee and hydrating. I also filled my water bottle and put some element in there because today, before, during, and after the race, I will be hydrating with element because it has a scientifically based formulation of electrolytes with 1000 milligrams of sodium, 200 milligrams of potassium, and 60 milligrams of magnesium. I have been relying on it through all of my training for the last eight months to make sure that I am hydrated and I will be relying on it again today especially because this race is in hot and humid conditions being hydrated is super super important and i'm glad that i have element so i don't have to worry about any of the science i just trust their formula if you would like to try it element is offering a free sample pack of all eight flavors to my viewers just go to drinkelement.com slash alley or go to the link in my description and stay salty my friends i wrote a bit in my journal about my thoughts before the race i just wrote that it was 2022 so I'm doing well and then it was time to make my pre-race meal which I had three and a half hours before the race this was just two packets of instant oatmeal with some protein powder and a banana and for the rest of the morning I just chilled and watched a rom-com then it was time to warm up and head to the start which I was really nervous before this race 27k is a pretty overwhelming distance for me these races still just feel super long and I get so anxious but I was also excited and when the gun went off, I was just going. Now, from the start, I was trying to really pace myself because I knew that this race was a very demanding course with each loop having a pretty significant climb and downhill. So as opposed to Mammoth where the whole first half was up and the whole second half was down, this race was going to be taxing the entire time because there was never a period where you didn't have a climb for a long time. So in Mammoth, I kind of felt like I had to be there for half the race and then the second half I could always get through. But this one was constant. So loop one was our first major climb and that's what we're on right now. And I was just hanging back around 15th or 20th place. I think I was in about 20th place at this point. And I felt really, really good on this climb. Like when I finished it, I was feeling super confident. I was happy at the bottom. I took a gel and I was like able to take it really easily because I wasn't even breathing that hard. And yeah, this climb gave me a lot of confidence for the rest of the race because I felt pretty fresh and I wasn't too far back from the top 10. And I also was holding my own on the descents even though they were pretty stereotypical European and technical. I felt good on them and heading back into the town center where the aid station was, I was really excited to start lap two and just keep working my way up. Lap two had two climbs on it, but during the second climb, I really started to struggle 
and I was pretty nervous because that was less than halfway into the race, but I knew that I'd get an aid station after that lap, so I was hoping that once I grabbed a new gel and a flask, I would kind of bounce back and start feeling better. <laughs> And on the first climb of lap three, I actually did feel a little bit better, but that's because it was steep and we were power hiking. As soon as the course got runnable, I really struggled. I literally just felt like I had no legs and the constant up down of this course just completely took it out of me. And lap four was luckily really short because by this point I was nearly passing out and I honestly did not know if I would make it through to the end of this race, but I did. <laughs> I'm so nauseous, I might die, I might drop down on the spot. Oh, that was so brutal. I had to convince myself to not quit for like eight, nine miles. It was so hard. The climbing, it just wouldn't end. It was brutal. It was up and down and up and down the whole time. There was no like flowy descents either. It was all like brutally steep or technical. That was an absolute thrashing of my legs. Like barely being able to run by the end. Like I was, <laughs> it was so hard to not walk the entire thing. And I'm about to throw up. I don't think you guys understand. I'm not being dramatic. I'm downplaying this right now. Downplaying. I could die at any moment. <sighs> So yeah, it wasn't my best race, but I'm super proud of the effort I put in. I'm absolutely positive that I had nothing more to give. And even though I ended up getting 19th when I really felt like I could have moved up after that first lap, I know that my preparation just wasn't quite perfect and that this was my first year on the trails and a lot of the time I finished my races feeling like I was underprepared technically or for the conditions or for the course and so that's frustrating but I also know that I have a lot of time to learn and improve and I'm excited for the years to come having more experience under my belt and hopefully being much more prepared next year and able to really showcase my fitness but for now I'm happy to celebrate the end of my first ever trail season and I'm so thankful for these opportunities and for the incredible people that I met along the way so yeah there it is. That's my first ever trail season. Thanks for following along and that's all for now, folks.